Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's session for the Body Worn Camera Policy and Implementation Program on Performance Measurement Measures and Reporting. My name is Carrie Shelton, and I'm the Body Worn Camera Training and Technical Assistance Project Manager for BJA's Body Worn Camera Policy and Implementation Program. As a reminder, points of view or opinions expressed by the speakers throughout the national meeting do not necessarily represent the official position or policies of the U.S. Department of Justice. Now, thank you all for joining us for this session, which I think is going to be really very informative for all of our grantee agencies. We're going to be hearing about the BJA performance measures that are required for you on your body worn camera policy and implementation program grant and the tools that you can use to report them. Joining us today, we have Victoria Goldberg from BJA's performance measurement tool team. With that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Ms. Goldberg. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today I'm going to uh, discuss, um, as was um, just said, the performance management measures and reporting tool. Um, we are currently in the process of switching over our tools, so I'm going to kind of highlight when that um, aspect comes up. I'm going to just point out um, the where things are going to be changing and just keep an eye out because there'll be future training on that um, specifically um, in the future. Um, so today, uh, next slide. Uh, today, the agenda is um, we're going to review the purpose and importance of performance measures themselves. Uh, we're going to go over the questionnaire structure, cover common reporting challenges, and discuss uh, some of the previously reported data and frequently asked questions. And then um, either during or during the end, we can have a Q&A about things that um, were presented on today. Um, I just want to note again that we're changing over the system. So anything that's system specific, I may or may not be able to answer. Um, although I do have an email address um, that I'll put in the chat at the end um, for you to direct your specific questions to if I cannot address them. Uh, next slide. So again, the first section, we're going to just go over the purpose of performance uh, measures and the reporting process. Next slide. So performance management simply refers to the process of collecting and analyzing data that relates to performance. In this case, the data that relates to the performance of you, the grantees, who received the Body Worn Camera Grant. Uh, this graphic introduces a variety of types of performance measures we can use to track progress towards the Body Worn Camera goals and identify areas for improvement. Uh, inputs refers to program resources. So for example, uh, grant funding, like um, where we ask about your program's funding allocations by program activities, uh, as well as personnel, um, which we get at through a variety of questions about cross-sector partners and community participation. Activities are the actions that convert inputs to outputs uh, that eventually result in measurable progress toward the program's goals. These things can include trainings, meetings, partnership development, data analysis, and strategic planning. Outputs are the countable products or services that result from these actions. So, for example, the assignment of cam uh, cameras, data management and tracking, analysis and tagging, and then the number of new officers eligible for body-worn cameras versus those who um, are get them during the grant cycle. Outcomes speak to the longer-term program goals. Uh, these associated outcomes can be found in the outcome section of the performance management questionnaire. For example, um, whether there was an increase in the percent of officers within the department wearing cameras, uh, body-worn cameras, or whether the, uh, a department was able to reduce the number of use of force reports. Next slide. Uh, why do we have performance measures? Performance measurement uh, helps BJA and its grantees understand their progress towards the key goals um, and objectives. We use performance measures to identify successes and opportunities for improvement, to track grant activity and progress and inform decision making, uh, to understand funding decisions and their impact on uh, BJA's strategic plan, and to comply with the Government Performance and Results Modernization Act. Next slide, please. Uh, performance measurement benefits both BJA and you, the grantees. BJA uses uh, this information to identify areas of success and potential opportunities for improvement, uh, track grant progress towards program goals, understand how funds are distributed, and comply with, again, the Government Performance Results and Modernization Act. So a lot of the reason that we have performance um, measures are not only uh, to let BJA know what's going on, um, 
with uh, how grantees are spending money, but also to comply with um, the Government Performance and Results Modernization Act. Next slide. Uh, grantees can use performance measures to accomplish many of the same goals that BJA can uh, BJA uses them for. For example, identifying areas uh, of improvement uh, to focus internal efforts, to proactively request assistance to address challenges, and to develop evidence of program progress that can be used to enhance advocacy and sustainability. This is all about being able to use the data that you're generating and reporting um, to BJA for your own purposes, maybe to get other grant funding or to just see how um, the program is working for you and improving your um, department. Next slide, please. Uh, here are a few examples of the kind of reports that we generate from the performance measure data that you report. Both of these screenshots show the front pages of annual program reports that use quantitative and qualitative performance data to provide a high level summary of grantee activity and achievement at the program level. These types of reports are posted on the BJA website and are shared with a variety of audiences, including the Office of Justice Programs, as well as BJA leadership, Congress, and the general public. If you'd like to see examples of these reports, please go to the BJA website um, and search for the body worn camera um, report. Next slide, please. So the current reporting requirements um, require that grantees report into the PMT. And the PMT stands for the Performance Management Tool. This is the current system that houses all of the online questionnaires that grantees must complete every quarter. Um, they're currently housed um, for all grantees uh, for OJP. And I, as I said, we're currently working to transition to a new system called Just Grants. So if you hear anything or get any emails about Just Grants, that's the system that is gonna be replacing the PMT. Um, again, there will be additional training on the specifics of how to use Just Grants and what that will look like for you. Um, but for now, anytime you see PMT, just know that that stands for the system itself that you'll be reporting into and that that will eventually be just grant. Um, so the PMT um, includes numerical performance measures as well as narrative questions. And the difference between those are, um, I'll get into a little bit later, but numerical measures are just uh, uh, numbers. Um, for example, how many officers received cameras um, during the reporting period. And narrative questions are more about your goals that you're creating as well as whether or not you've achieved them and maybe what obstacles got in your way or what things were able to help you get over those goals. Uh, grantees report semi-annually. You're required to answer the narrative questions for the previous six months of activity. Um, and then the closeout questions are required in a final report at the end of the grant award. And you must submit the final report as an attachment uh, to your final progress report. And we'll get into the schedule next. Next slide, please. So this table outlines the types of data you'll report each reporting period, when your reports are due into the system, and whether you will also need to upload your reports into GMS. And GMS is the grants management system, um, which is also going to be replaced soon um, by Just Grants. As you can see from the alternating values under the second column, you'll only report the narrative questions in January and July and during your last reporting period of grant activity. Again, these narrative questions are the qualitative questions, anything that's more about your goals, um, basically things that are not numeric related, um, regardless of whether, of where you're, that falls on the schedule, uh, your final report. Again, the system is changing and I'm not exactly sure what the GMS upload system situation will be going forward, um, but all the due dates will remain the same at this point as far as we are aware, so October 1st. December 31st, January 1st, to March 31st, etc. Um, and again, if you have any questions about the differences between GMS and PMT, um, please let me know and I can forward you to the right um, person for that. Next slide, please. So now we're going to talk about the questionnaire structure very briefly. Uh, next slide. So as mentioned in an earl earlier part of the training, the questions in the PMT are made up of two main categories. The first is quantitative program performance measures. This is where you'll enter numeric data you collected over the course of the reporting period. Uh, for example, how many dollars were spent on body-worn cameras during this reporting period? The second section is qual the qualitative narrative questions. These questions are open-ended and do not require a numeric response. The narrative questions are answered during the April to June and October to December, December periods, 
Um, an example of this type of question is, um, what type of equipment was reported during the funding period, or what challenges did you face in completing your program goals during this reporting period? Remember these questions, questions to capture the full experience you've had with conducting uh, your activities with your BJA funds. So the more information provide, provide, provide. Um, the quantitative data you report is used to establish a baseline, track performance against program goals, and create a nationwide picture of numeric data for BJA. Narrative questions are open-ended and give uh, you, the grantees, a chance to express in your own words how you experience how your experience has been conducting the program activities with BJA funding. Both of these categories are equally important for your reporting, and you should take every possible measure to ensure the accuracy and integrity of your data. Next slide, please. So now we're just going to go over some of the common challenges um, that we've had in the past that have been reported by grantees. To introduce this section, I'd like to share some information about how BJA identifies common challenges and seeks to improve data quality. Uh, BJA's planning, performance, and impact team assess data consistency and accuracy and reaches out to grantees with potential issues. Program grant managers also play a role in enhancing performance data quality through site visits where they identify and document and verify PMP data entries for major activities. Next slide. Uh, again, as a, this is a screenshot of the PMT, so this may or may not um, be relevant in the future, but I just wanted to talk about reporting zeros because I think that this will be relevant um, going forward no matter what system you're reporting into. Uh, you're required to provide a response to all mandatory measures. Um, however, if a mandatory measure does not apply to activities funded by your award, we ask that you enter a zero and provide an explanation in the additional comments section for when your report is complete. Uh, upon viewing your complete report, you can se select add, add a comment. Um, this will allow you to submit additional comments to explain why you're not able to provide data. Uh, a brief description such as we are still in our planning period or there was no activity are sufficient responses. And this information provides, um, this information improves the data quality and help us understand what the zeros mean. Um, for example, it can be really easy for someone to just uh, put zero, 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 and that could be because there was no grant activity um, for that reporting period for them. But if another grantee reports 0000, zero, zero, zero but they had been trying to um, have, perform grant activities and were unsuccessful, we want to be able to track the differences between those two grantees. Next slide, please. Uh, many of the questions in the Body Worn Cameras Performance Measurement Questionnaire are related. And there is a data verification process in which analysts examine related questions to ensure sites are reporting consistently. Here is an example from the outreach and community engagement section. Question two asks whether you have conducted any outreach during the reporting period. If you have conducted outreach, then you will be required to identify the criminal justice organization or agency that you conducted the outreach with and the type of outreach that was conducted. The form will not let you proceed uh, if you select yes to question two, um, to not respond to question three. So uh, they are question three is reliant upon question two. Uh, and if you answer no to question two, then you will not be required to answer question three. So a lot of questions are related to each other. Next slide, please. To wrap up this section, I'd like to quickly go over common challenges with defining goals and objectives, which are again, part of the narrative process or part of the narrative questionnaire. Uh, and offer a few tips. It's important to write out well-defined goals and objectives to clarify your priorities and to highlight criteria for success. The SMART mnemonic walks users through the important dimensions of a good goal or objective. They should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. We recommend that you reevaluate your goals twice a year to determine whether they should be updated and use data to drive this process. Next slide, please. Here's some examples of some good goals and some goals needing improvement. I won't go through all of them, but for example, um, a good goal includes improved public safety by equipping all officers with body-worn camera. Uh, goal needing improvement is just to buy body-worn cameras. Another example would be to produce three new policies governing the new use, storage, and dissemination of body-worn cameras and recorded video, and one needing improvement would be just to write new policies on body-worn cameras. So you can kind of see the difference um, between what we consider a good goal and one that might need some improvement. Next slide. 
So finally, I'm just going to go over some of the data from previous years um, from our most recent reporting periods. Next slide. So as you can see, um, the amount of money uh, going towards the body of worn camera program has increased dramatically in the past couple of years. Um, last year, or excuse me, for fiscal year 19, um, there was $23 million given out to grantees this year, 22 and a half. Um, the number of plans is supposed to remain pretty consistent around that uh, 22 and a half, 23 million for next fiscal year as well. Um, next slide. Uh, here's a comparison about um, awards given for fiscal year 19 and um, previous fiscal year. So as you can see in 2019, um, based on the type of agency that was given the award, there were 75 awards given. Um, a total of 344 awards have been given since fiscal year 15. Uh, in, 20, in fiscal year 2019, there was over $18 million given to those 75 grantees. Um, in total since 2015, or fiscal year 2015, over $57 million has been given to grantees. Uh, and again, this is broken out by the types of agencies in which the money was given to. Next slide, please. Uh, total cameras purchased, this is just for fiscal year 2019. Uh, so last, the last full reporting period year, as you can see, um, over 15,000 uh, cameras have been purchased in total, um, ranging from 107 in small agencies up to over 7,000 in the extra large agency category. Next slide. Additionally, over 21,000 officers have been trained just in, that should say fiscal year 2019, uh, just in fiscal year 2019 alone. Um, this includes in-person training, academy training, um, online training, and other types of training that were given specifically related to body-worn cameras. Next slide. Uh, again, here are the types of training that are being given. Uh, almost 1,000 different trainings were given during fiscal year 2019, um, with the most popular being classroom formal and training, uh, in-person training, but also field training. Um, other training includes things that are um, having vendors come in and give other training as well. Um, and then, yeah, web and computer-based training was also very popular. Uh, next slide. So uh, as part of your performance measures that you'll have to report in, you have to, one of the um, questions asks how many officers were proposed to receive body-worn cameras during that reporting period. Um, and so to date from 2015 through fiscal year 2019, uh, over 50,000 officers were proposed to receive cameras and then actually 30, over 32,000 actually received cameras using BJA funds um, specifically. We ask for we ask you to pull out um, how many cameras you get through funding from other um, outlets, but also specifically how many cameras you purchase through your specific BJA fund. And so overall, 64% of officers that were proposed to get body worn cameras through BJA funding specifically were able to get them. Next slide, please. Um, if you have any questions specific to the PMT system as it is now, it is still up and operational. It is um, in October when we are thinking we'll be switching over. Um, this is the help desk information. It's uh, open Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 Eastern. Um, there's the phone number. There's the email address. I highly recommend um, a phone call. It's the fastest way to get in contact with someone. Um, the email and phone calls should be answered within 24 hours, so please don't hesitate to leave a voicemail even after business hours um, if you happen to have something come up. Um, I think that kind of covers it. Again, I, if you have any questions that are um, related to the system, I'll do my best to answer them, but since we're switching over, um, I'm not 100% sure um, if I'll be able to answer all of them, and I, as soon as I stop talking, I'm going to put um, our tech email, per our tech person's email address in the chat for everyone to see. So you can um, address things with her specifically if I'm not able to answer them. Thank you. Great, thank you so much for the presentation. We do have a couple of questions. Um, the first is, what is the official date the PMT will go down and what is the estimated date for the new system to be available? 
That's a good question. The estimated date, well, so we're currently trying to figure out how long the PMT will stay open for. Um, the idea is that it will potentially go down as soon as the new system goes up, up, and that is tentatively August, excuse me, October 1st. Um, it's, we're pushing to keep the PMT open um, beyond that, um, but it's unclear on whether that will be the case right now. Okay. Um, this is probably gonna change with the new system, but a user noted that they had to manually copy and paste performance measurement tool questions into an Excel sheet and label tabs per quarter for their team to fill in the data each time. Is there a better way to do this? Um, that would be something that you should email directly to Elizabeth Wayne, who I'm going to put her email in right now. She's our PMT um, specialist. So I'm no. not sure, sorry. Great, no worries. Um, what is the, the next question is, Maybe, maybe we'll be able to answer this. We'll, we'll give it a shot. Uh, why is the PMT <laughs> quarterly and performance measurement report semi-annual? Um, that's a great question that I do not have the answer to. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> okay. Um, so you noted that the goals and objectives are um, narrative. How detailed do they need to be? As detailed as you're willing to provide, um, most goals and objective, most goals are about a sentence or two long, not more than that. Um, and objectives are a little bit longer. Uh, again, the narrative questions only do not need to be um, answered every reporting period. I think they're only twice a year. Um, and we're really, I'm, we understand that it can be um, hard to write a lot of descriptions or there's just not a lot of time to do so. Um, but we appreciate, oh, sorry, my cat is happy about this. Um, <laughs> we appreciate people who are willing to put in as much information as possible. Um, for specifically goals and objectives, they should be, goals should be a, a sentence or two. Objectives, um, I guess, can be the same. But any narrative type question, the more you can put in, the better. Okay, sounds good. Um, we have another question about when agencies can begin requesting reimbursement from BJA. However, I don't think this is a PMT question. So I'm gonna see if David Lewis, are you available to answer that question when agencies can start requesting reimbursement from BJA? I can tell you. Uh, oh, Florida, great. Can you hear me? Yes, the grantee can start drawing down funds as soon as they complete all their, their special condition requirements. And that also includes the grants and financial management, tra the online training. So uh, there's quite a few things they have to complete first before they can draw down the grant funds. Great, thank you, Gerardo. And yeah, if anyone has any questions about that, you should definitely reach out to your state policy advisors. Gerardo. And I also follow up to the previous question, I would recommend that the grantees provide as much detail as possible how like their project because if a member of Congress or anyone wants to see what they've done, uh, it's not good to see NA or, uh, or, you know, just, it's better to have more detail than nothing. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another question that says, I'm just about to close out a grant early, and if for some reason I cannot close it out, what should I check for? So I think this, again, would be a good one, um, Mr. Velasco, is if you could answer it. Uh, they have to make sure that all the special conditions are met, and also that um, the uh, reporting requirements are in. Those are the things that need to be completed before they can close out the project. Very good, thank you. Carrie, this is David Lewis. I just want to answer the one question about the quarterly and um, semi-annually. That'd be great, thank you. Um, the one reason that we do that is because 
um, programs, we get requests um, about um, a use of the funds and that there are uh, some very specific questions in dealing with the uh, PMT that help us, as you saw these charts um, that Victoria presented, we can provide that data to our congressional people and to our administration. So it's easier for us, and the reason we went with that, to provide those um, statistical information on a quarterly basis as opposed to the semi-annual. Um, this just allows us to, to keep those, that data and information fresher than have to do it every six months. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Lewis, appreciate it. Okay, I think I see one more question. Okay, do you have to answer the narrative questions even if it is your final report? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much, Ms. Goldberg, for your presentation. We sincerely appreciate it. Very informative.